For the first part of this week's experiment, we're going to need six cups. And as you can see, three of them are filled with water. And since all my cups are the same, I fill them all up to a line on the cup so I can see where the water level is. And you're going to need three other empty cups. And for my first setup, I've got two cups on the same level. My second setup, I have the empty cup on a book, so it's slightly elevated. And on my third setup, I have the full cup on a book, so it's slightly elevated. So now we're going to add some food coloring into the cups and give the water a bit of color so it'll be easier to see. So as you can see, now we've added food coloring to all three of the cups with water. And we're going to mix it up so that the water is a bit, so that the food coloring is a bit more balanced in the water. And the water has a red color so we can see. So now we're going to take a sheet of paper towel. And we're going to roll it up like this so that we've got kind of like a long, long strip of paper. Now we're going to bend it a bit. So first let's do our setup where both cups are on the same level. So we have our bent paper towel. We're going to put one end into the water and we're going to put the other end in the empty cup. And now we're going to do the same thing with another piece of paper towel. We're going to roll it up. And this time let's put it in our setup over here. So we'll put one end in the liquid one and one end in the empty cup. And be sure the paper towel doesn't slip. And now our last paper towel. We're gonna put it here. Like this. And this one I'm gonna have to put it closer so it doesn't fall over. So now that we have our three setups, we're going to let it sit over a period of 24 hours and we're going to observe it a few times during those 24 hours. So let's do an observation right now. It's been about 10 minutes after we have did the setup and you can see that for the first setup, it's wet, the paper towel is wet all the way to around here and there's still no water here and the water here has the water level has dropped a tiny bit like half a centimeter and here the paper towel is wet all the way to around here And the water level has fell less than the first setup, but the water level still fell a bit. And now for our last one, the paper towel is wet to around this part. And the water level here has fell the least out of all three setups. So we're going to observe these three setups again after 12 hours to see what happens. So we're back here after 8 hours, and first let's observe the celery stick. So the red colored water has dropped slightly below its original water level, but the celery stick is still completely green. So no red could be observed on the celery stick. 
And now moving on to our water. So first, with the setup where the empty cup was elevated, you can see that some of the water has went into the other cup. About one third of the water, I would say. One third of the water from the full cup has uh, dripped into the empty cup. And the setup in the middle, you can see that it's about half and half here. So half the water in the original cup, half the water in the empty cup. And our last setup where the full cup was elevated, you can see that about two thirds of the water, I would say, has flowed into the empty cup, while only one third of the water remains in the originally full cup. Now this is our setup after 20 hours. And let's observe the celery stick first. So you can see that here the water level has dropped quite a bit, which means that some of the water has went up the celery stick, the stem of the celery stick. But the leaves are still pretty green, so perhaps the celery stick is too tall or too thick maybe, or there wasn't enough food coloring or water. So now moving on to our paper towel. So here you can see that the results were about the same as what we made for our last observation. Around one third of the water went into the empty cup. But you can see that the water in the empty cup is kind of light colored. While the water in the originally full cup is kind of darkish at the top. And our middle cup is a bit balanced, I would say. Though the water in the originally empty cup is a bit lighter, but the water is about half and half. Now for our last cup, uh, I'd say about around two-thirds to three-quarters of the water has dripped into the empty cup. And so these are set up after 20 hours. So now it's been 24 hours since we originally made this setup. And first let's observe our celery stick. So the water level is still pretty similar to what we observed at the 20 hour mark. But you can see that the leaves, some parts have begun getting red spots. So a few red spots here and there, and if you look closely, you can see the dark spots are a bit reddish. But it has not fully turned red yet, so perhaps the stick is too big. And now for our cups and paper towel setup. So this is the setup where the empty cup was elevated where none was elevated, and where the full cup was elevated. And an interesting observation I've made is that in all of these, the water level in both cups are the same. So you can see that these two are similar, and these two water levels are similar, and so are these two. So I think that my hypothesis is that the water flows into the empty cup until the water level in both cups are the same relative to the floor, or to the table in this case. Now you may be wondering why all this is happening with the paper towels and the celery stick and all that. But before we tell you, remember to subscribe please! So to understand what was going on with all that paper towel stuff back there, uh, let's draw a picture of the setup. So you can see that here's our water and here's our paper towel. Now if we zoom in on the paper towel, let's zoom in really really close. You can see that here are the sides of the paper towel. Inside there are tiny little kind of like vessels in there. <coughs> so these tiny little tube-like things which the water can travel through. Like the fibers. So water has a 
can you speak to get higher and be sucked into these tiny little tubes? And it's called capillary action. So when the water is in there, this big water tower just comes into this giant pile of water molecules. And the water molecules go, hey, there's a new paper towel here. Why not explore? And they just start traveling up through these little tubes. They start traveling up, up, up through the towel. And it's connected here. The towel goes here into another empty cup. <coughs> and now the empty cup also starts getting water. And the water level rises, rises, until they have around the same water level. But then, now both sides are traveling up through the, water, the paper towel. So this side is pushing up, and this side is also pushing up. So basically, when we get to a point where the water level is even, nobody moves anywhere because when they both push at each other, nothing kind of moves. So they stay at that water level, which is why in the end when we observed it, all the water levels are the same. Now, the same thing was supposed to happen with the selenium sticks. We have our cup here with the water, and we have our selenium sticks. Yeah, that's a great selling stick, right? So, anyways, uh, inside the tube of the celery stick, we also have these tiny vessels, these tiny tubes that the water can travel through. And what is supposed to happen is that the water should go up through the tube and into the leaves, which is why the leaves will all appear red. Uh, but instead, I think maybe our celery stick is too thick, so the tubes inside were too thick for the water. So either that or the stick, celery stick was too tall, so the water took longer to get up there. Who knows, maybe in another few hours, the celery stick will turn red. So basically, to sum it up, we have our water here and we have something stuck inside the water. So inside that something, either the paper towel or the celery stick, we have these tiny tubes which the water molecules travel up through. So the water molecules will travel up, which is why the paper towel and the celery stick experiment all work. So now we're gonna take a paper cutout of a flower and we're gonna fold the leaves up towards the middle, like this. So we're going to fold all the leaves up one by one so that they're standing up.